was in darkness. Amen. But now, amen, we have light. And it's because of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Again, we thank God for all you fathers. Praise God for you. God bless you. Uh, Vicki Bell, close that back door. Amen. Close that back door. Amen. We thank God for all your fathers. We pray that your heart is encouraged and that you are strengthened. Amen. We pray for fresh strength. Amen. Fresh anointing from the Holy Spirit. Amen. To give you strength to run your race. Amen. To finish your journey. Amen. And to keep pressing toward that mark. Amen. For that prize. One day, Father, you're going to hear God say, well done. Amen. There were many fathers that advocated their responsibility. Amen. They gave up and gave in. Amen. But, uh, Father, one day you're going to hear the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. You have been faithful over a few things. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. Today we want to keep on pressing here. We're still talking about it's bigger than you. Amen. Today I want to press on here a little bit further. Amen. I've been talking about wholeness. We've been talking about wholeness. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Amen. We've been talking about wholeness. What it means to be whole in Christ Jesus. Amen. What it means to be whole. We've been talking about uh, uh, how we got here. Of course, we were talking about uh, uh, sinners in the church and uh, what we do with sinners and why sinners come to church. But well, we're going to be reminded of that today. Amen. It's amazing. Uh, older I get, even more frequent. Uh, it's frequent now that the Lord takes me back to stuff I talked about 25 years ago. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. So, amen. We want to remind the saints why we're here. Amen. We want to talk about why the sinner, amen, why the, why the sinner is in church, but more than that, why the saints are here. Amen. We're here. We're working on something. Everybody say holiness. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about holiness, what it means to be whole. That definition, of course, comes from Luke chapter 2. Amen. There's a reason that you do everything that you do. Amen. Amen. There's a reason that you come into the house of the Lord. There's a reason. It shouldn't be to impress anybody. In the old church, we used to say it shouldn't be for form nor fashion. Amen. It, it, it shouldn't be about impressing anybody. Amen. The reason we come here is we're working on something. Everybody say holiness. Every time you walk through the doors of the church, amen, you, you should be working on something in your spirit. Amen. In your heart and in your mind. Amen. We're working on something. Amen. We're following the Jesus model for holiness. Luke chapter 2. Amen. Verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Amen. Amen. We want to remind everybody about our International Day. International Day is coming up. Amen. Uh, Deacon Phillip did a wonderful commercial for us. It's amazing how he did it. I don't know how he did it. Amen. But go to Facebook. He did a commercial. I don't even, uh, matter of fact, he taped it during the last International Day. Amen. He showed it to me. So then we got this commercial clip on Facebook. Just go to Facebook. We have a bona fide commercial on there. So go check that out. Amen. But we looking forward to the fellowship that's on the fifth Sunday. That's on the fifth Sunday. Look at the Jesus definition for holiness. So Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, fame with God, and men. Everybody see that? Luke chapter 2, verse 52. In the same place? Amen. And let's look at that again. Jesus grew. What did he grow in? Everybody say wisdom. Amen. He grew in wisdom. And what else? If I say stature. And favor with God and favor with men. Amen. He grew in wisdom. If I say wisdom. Amen. Amen. He grew in wisdom. Wisdom. Amen. That's mental health. Everyone say mental health. Amen. Stature. Stature. Everyone say stature. That's physical health. Everyone say physical health. Favor with man. If I say favor with man. That's social. If I say social. And then faith with God. Everybody say faith with God. That's spiritual, spiritual. Today I'm talking about, we've been talking about for a couple of weeks, and I didn't think we were going to go this far, but uh, when I think I'm finished, you know, the Lord just keeps showing me stuff. Everybody say this, favor with man. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Lord. Amen. It pays to serve the Lord. We have stumbled upon something that's amazing, that is amazing here. If your mind is made up that you're going to live for God, amen, there's some benefits and blessings out there for you. Amen. 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 All of us who are saved, we're on our way to heaven. Amen. amen. But I want to give you a little incentive down here. Amen. You don't have to live your entire existence as, uh, you know, I hear people talk about hell on earth. Amen. It pays to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Here to encourage somebody, it pays to serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to give you a text, but I'm, today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you a testimony. Amen. I, I, I'm going to give you a text, but I'm also going to give you a testimony. That's what I always look for. You know, when I listen to preachers, 
Amen. I want to hear the story. Amen. I want to hear. I want to hear the testimony. I can read the Bible for myself. I can read. I'm very proficient at that. I can read the Bible for myself. I want to hear how it applies to you. I want to hear your testimony. Amen. So I'm gonna give you a text, but I'm gonna give you a testimony also. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Lord. And and today I'm gonna to remind you about serving the Lord. I want to remind you about serving the Lord. Amen. One of our primary texts, of course, was Proverbs 16, 7. Let's start there. Proverbs 16, 7. Proverbs 16, 7. Favor with man. Remember, we gave the definition for that. Favor with man. What is that? That is when God blesses you through other people. That's when God gives you grace. Everybody say grace. grace. Or that word grace is translated charis, gifts of kindness. Gifts of kindness. This is when God exercises gifts of kindness to his children. To his children. This is when God does miracles. Miracles. Amen. And God still does miracles. Amen. Amen. I say God does miracles. God touches. Amen. Amen. The people uh, here in the earth. Amen. If you're not a child of God, you're a creature of God. If you're not a child of God, you're a creature of God. Amen. God is the creator. John chapter 1 says, to all who believed, who received him and believed, he gave the right to become children of God. If you're not a child of God, you're still a creature of God. You're still a creature of God. All his creatures are each with him says, here below. All the creatures here below. Everybody not a child of God. Amen. Amen. But I'm so glad I'm saved. I say, I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm, a, I'm his child. I can lay claim to some, some things. Amen. And one of the things I can lay claim to is faith. Amen. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 1, after this, the Lord appointed 72. Are you in the same place? The Lord appointed 72 and sent them out. How did he send them out? How did he send them out? Look at your neighbor say, you going with me? Don't go out by yourself. Look at your neighbor. Y'all, you roll. And you going with me? You, you, you going with me? Don't go out by yourself. Don't go out by yourself. Amen. Because, amen, if you go out by yourself, you not, may, might not make it back in. Go that category. I gave, some, gave you something last week. I told you two things that please God. Amen. Those of you that take notes, come on, give that back to me. Live holy, yes. Walk by faith, amen, amen. If you didn't write that down, don't catch that this time, amen. How do you please God? First, amen, if I say live holy. Come on, say it again, live holy. That's First Thessalonians chapter 4, to live in a way that's pleasing to God, sanctified and holy. And then the other one said walk by faith. Come on, say walk by faith. It's real easy, that's, that's Bible 101, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. For without faith it is impossible to what? Amen, without faith it is impossible to what? Amen. Let me add one more to that. Let me add one more. I don't want this to be too exhaustive, but let me add one more thing to that because I, I wouldn't be a good Bible teacher, and I am a good Bible teacher. If I wouldn't be a good Bible teacher, if I didn't give you this, add one more to that category. Worship. Worship pleases God. Worship pleases God. Add, add that to the category. Amen, 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 amen. Not lip service. Worship. Not leftovers from a Saturday night of getting drunk and, and, and dancing on a pole. Amen. But, but worship. Wor worship pleases God. And how many of you know you can't fool God? You can't throw sloppy seconds at God. You can't give God something that's insincere and think he's going to be impressed by it. Amen. Worship pleases God. Worship pleases God. Let me show it to you real quick. I don't ever tell you nothing that I can't show you in the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Let me show it to you very quickly. I want to show you how to please God. And remember from last week, this is real good for us. Thank you, Lord. We're freeing up some people. See, because some of you are people pleasers. Amen. You sitting here right now trying to figure out how you're going to please your boss tomorrow. How you're going to make your boss smile. How you're going to make this person smile. How you're going to try to manipulate this person. I'm so glad about this. See, when I have favor with God and, and, and favor with men, I don't have to please and chase after people. Come on, say amen, somebody. I don't, I don't have to chase after people that I don't like. Amen. I don't have to, I don't have to impress people that I don't know. Amen. Amen. When you serve and, 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 and worshiping and pleasing God, amen. How many of you know God will take care of people? It pays to serve the Lord. Yeah, Nehemiah, he called on the Lord. He, the Lord blessed him and hooked him up. Amen. Esther, she called on the Lord. Amen. The Lord blessed him and hooked him up. Amen. Amen. Strong called on the Lord, and the Lord blessed him and hooked him up. Amen. 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 Back in 2005, 2005, 2000, I think it was 2005, yeah. Amen. I, uh, when I left home, I was 17, went to the Marine Corps. Amen. The one reason why I left home was to get out the ghetto. My parents could, teach, could send me to college. Amen. Three of us. Amen. And uh, so me and my brother, we left and went to the Marine Corps. 
Amen. First thing I bought uh, Jabari was a car. Amen. First thing I bought was a car because I was stationed. I lived in Japan. I lived overseas for a year. I lived overseas, Korea, Philippines, traveled all over the place. Amen. And then, uh, but I was saving my money. So as soon as I hit the United States, first thing I bought was a car. I bought a Mazda 626. They don't even make those anymore. I bought a Mazda 626. I drove it so I didn't know nothing about the car. I didn't even know where the oil dipstick was. Amen. I drove it. Amen. And I forgot. I didn't change the oil. I didn't change the oil. So one day the engine just burst into flames on five. Amen. And I got out the car and just started walking. I think it's still there. Burning. <laughs> amen. First car was a Mazda. Second car was a, uh, a toy, candy apple red Toyota Corolla. Amen. Toyota Corolla. Then I bought a Geo Prism. Amen. Geo Prism. I don't think they make those anymore. I don't even think Gio is even in business. <laughs> Fourth car, I bought a, a, a Toyota Camp. I bought a Toyota Camp. Amen. I um, uh, bought it from this guy, uh, my wife's brother, uh, Felicia, her husband, Evie, an uh, African, Nigerian dude. Nigerian. Amen. Africans know where the deals are. Africans know where the deals are. Amen. He told me, he said, he said, he said, he said, strong, he said, go see this dude, go see this dude. He's selling cars, he got it. He gonna hook you up, he gonna hook you up. Amen. Amen. East West Motors, I'm in. Right. Never heard of him, never knew him, but I was taking my brother's, my brother's, my brother-in-law's word for it. So I went in there, amen. He had this uh, nice car, I had the money, amen. I couldn't afford to buy a new car, so I bought the car from him, amen. And uh, I'm in, so bought the car. We, we, we hooked it up. So, you know, time goes on, wear and tear. Wear and tear on vehicles. Any vehicle, I don't care if it's brand new, wear and tear. So, you know, uh, oil changes, all that good stuff, amen. But uh, something happened, uh, something major happened to it. Uh, amen. And, you know, it's, it's one thing if the repair is $50, $100, you know, da, 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 da. It's another thing when the repair is like about $1,000 or $1,500. How I many of you know, a lot of us, we don't just have that laying around. Come on, say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. You don't have, you, you might not have 50, you might have it, amen, but I'm not, you don't just have 1500 $2,000 laying around, you know, and if your transmission go out or something major goes out. So this guy, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't really know him. I didn't, I didn't know this guy. And uh, so I'm thinking, I'm like, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm, you're going to have to help me on this one. I mean, I'm in a jam. No transportation, you know, no transportation. If you don't have the money, you just don't have the money. Okay, but I felt the Lord pushing me. I felt the Lord pushing me. So, and this was the type of thing where you, I couldn't drive the vehicle. Couldn't drive it. So I had to take it in. I had to take it in. So I'm like, okay, Lord, how am I going to do this? And I don't know this guy from the man on the moon for real. You know? So I go in, and, and, and he, he works with me. He says, okay, well, yeah, we can fix it. We can fix it. It's going to take a little time. And so it's going it's to cost you a whole lot. It's going to cost you a, a big piece. And I said, okay. And he saw the look on my face. He saw I was conflicted. He saw I was conflicted. And, uh, and I didn't even get to act because I was going to say, well, let me like, see if I can negotiate with him. But I didn't even get to negotiate with him. And he said, he said, he said, you pastor, right? You pastor? I said, yeah, I am a pastor. I said, yeah, I am, I am a, a pastor. He said, well, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. He said, don't worry about the bill. Don't worry about the bill. Don't worry about the bill. He saw I was a pastor because of all the stuff I had in my car. All the stuff I had in, in, in my car. And my, my brother-in-law, Evie, had told me that I was a pastor. He said, he said, don't worry about it. He said, don't worry about it. He said, Pastor Strong. Pastor Strong. Pastor Strong. And he got this funny accent. He got this funny accent. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, it was even worse because I had offended him. I had offended him. Because one day I said, I said, you are one of the nicest uh, Arab dudes I ever knew. He said, I'm not an Arab. He said, I'm not an Arab. He says, I'm from Persia. I'm from Iran. He says, Iranians are not Arabs. We're Persians. So now I have offended him. You know. Because they get offended by that, that kind of stuff. They get offended by that stuff. So, so we moving on. So like I said, so, so you know, like I said, I'm there and I'm, I was getting ready to negotiate, but he said, no, he said, don't worry about it. He said, he said, don't worry about the bill. He said, don't worry about the bill, Pastor Strong. He said, he said, but Pastor Strong, I need to talk to you about something. He said, you're a pastor, right? I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. He says, um, I'm having open heart surgery. He says, I smoked all my life. And he's up there. He's, 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 he's up. He's, he's north of 60. He's, he's up there. He says, yeah, he says, I'm having open heart surgery. He 
He says, uh, he says, can you pray for me? I need your prayers. So he's about to say, he said, I need your prayers. I said, can I pray for you? Yeah. I got oil in the car. <laughs> it was motor oil, but it was <laughs> The bill, like I said, the bill, he said, he said, pass it, don't worry about the bill. He just said, pay, pay, pay whenever you can. Pay whenever you can. He said, but I need your prayers. I need your prayers. And watch this. See, if you're a closet Christian, if you are not the kind of Christian. Now see, here, see, I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a servant of the Lord. And, and see, see, God it pays to serve the Lord. Amen. At designated times and when you need that blessing the most. Not something frivolous. Not something frivolous. I'm not talking about you going down to McDonald's to get a happy meal. I'm talking about when you are pressed in, in a corner and you, you need a... Anybody know what a miracle is? I said a miracle. We keep singing these songs. You made a way out of no way. I'm talking about a real blessing When I left the federal government, when I left the uh, Marine Corps, I went into the federal government, then I went private contractor. I went private contractor for a good while, then worked for private ministry, amen. Then God called me to ministry, God called me to ministry, and then he pushed, he closed one door, he opened up another door, opened up another door. Y'all know my testimony, I started volunteering down at the Central Union Mission, amen, working with men, working with men who were incarcerated, amen, drug addicts, amen, or just homeless on the street. That, those were the, the groups of men that we, we dealt with, amen. Many of the men are here with us today. They're here with us today. Went down, worked out over there for over 15 years, amen. Working there, serving, amen. Started volunteering, became a chaplain, became the director of that program, became the director of that program, amen. God is good, God is good. Worked down there, it was a very fruitful time, fruitful time, amen. But at that time, then I started to, to pursue ministry. I knew I wanted to become a pastor. I heard God's call, pressing me, pressing me, pressing me. Knew I had to go to school. If you're going to be real, amen. And the church I went to, amen, you couldn't be a minister unless you went to seminary, Bible college or seminary. You couldn't be a minister. He would not license your name. It's not the age you get. He would not put you up unless you committed to go to school. Sat in his office. He said, strong. He said, yeah. And he said, we saw it on you. Da, 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 da. I said, you got to go to school. So I started. I started a class. I started a class. I found Maple Springs Baptist Bible College or seminary. I started going, amen. It ain't cheap. Come on, say amen, somebody. It ain't cheap. This was way back, hey amen. This was this was this was uh, over 20 years ago. Man. We didn't know all we know about grants and scholarships and all that other stuff like that. So, hey amen. It was it wasn't cheap. So I started. I went one semester. I was like, mm, Lord, have mercy. Hey amen. I hope you called me because if you didn't call me, this ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I was in my office one day doing some homework assignment. Doing some homework assignment. I had all these seminary books stacked up. Hey amen. Uh, hey amen. Old white guy, the, uh, former executive director, Dr. Robert Rich. Y'all remember Dr. Rich? Yes. In the old church, y'all remember, remember that old crazy white dude who would come over and talk to us all the time? Yes. Amen. He just passed away about a year ago. I, I went to the funeral. Amen. Great man of God. He was the former executive director. He's the guy that hired me. He's the guy that, that hired me there. And uh, So I was in there doing some homework, doing something, had all these books. And uh, he, he, you know, he came in. He said, Strong, what you doing over this? So, Strong. This, he was, this guy was a giant. He, he went through World War II, amen. I mean, he was a legend. He was a pastor. He was, he was just a great man of God, great man of God. And uh, he said, Strong, what you doing over there? He said, I said, Doc, I'm doing my homework for seminary. I'm doing my homework for school. He said, you in seminary? You, you on the, I said, yes, sir. On the Bible college and seminary? He said, you taking classes? You doing this and you taking classes? You working here full time and you going? I said, hey, I said, that's the call. That's, the, that's what God told me to do. That's what God told me to do. He stood there. He stood back. He said, we're going to pay for your school. Amen. From that time, bachelor's degree, and then I finished the bachelor's degree. I said, well, I want to get a master's degree. He said, I tell you, we're going to pay for your school. Not one time. Thousands, not a dime. Not a dime. This is what Psalm 37 says. Say when you serve the Lord, He will give you the desires. You can't make me doubt God. You can't make it doubt. Amen. You can't make it doubt. You can't make it doubt. It pays. What's your name? Say it pays. It pays. It pays to serve. 